Jose Aran, I wanted to thank you for attending today's Lunch and Learn with Ariel Taylor and Career Services at Walsh. We're um, excited to have Ariel because I know as you meant you could tell by the name of the presentation, she had such success in our at our 2022 spring career fair. And we just wanted her to share her tips and tricks. Um, Ariel is an MBA student at Walsh graduating in December of this year. And uh, she is currently working as an office manager at, could you say one more time? I'm sorry, Ariel. TMP Architecture. Okay. TMP Architecture. Architecture. Yes. So thank you again for joining us. And go ahead and um, share share your this great information, Ariel. We're looking forward to it. Okay. Confidence, competence, and care. These are the three C's that are going to help you stand out to employers. <clears throat> now, before we dig into those three C's, let me tell you about how I was right where you are, thinking about attending a career networking event. It was 2022. I was at a company I actually loved, but feeling overworked and underpaid. I kept logging into Moodle and seeing that little pop-up that said, register for the spring career fair. I kept going back and forth about if I was gonna go, if I wasn't gonna go. And talking to my husband about it, he stops me and he says, Ariel, what would it hurt if you just go? I sat there and I looked at him dumbfounded. I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt anything. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Um, so I told him, you're right, which I rarely tell my husband, but honestly, he was right. It wouldn't hurt anything, and I just decided to go. At that point, I went into preparation mode. I only mm -hmm. had, I think, about a week um, to prepare, and so mm -hmm. from there, I knew that I... <laughs> From there, I knew that there were two things that I definitely needed to figure out and get together so I felt my most prepared and at my best. That was my resume and my attire. So for my resume, I went right into the Navigate app and signed up for a resume review session with Career Services. Please, please, please schedule your session with Cheryl. She's very, very busy, but she's very good at her job. So make sure you get that resume, resume review session with her. <laughs> now, once my resume was ready to go, thank you, Cheryl, I knew I didn't want to print my resume at home. Employers are looking at so many resumes when they're at a career fair. I wanted mine to stand out. I went to Office Depot and I printed my resume on a slightly heavier weighted paper in a slightly different color, off-white. Now, my resume would look different and feel different in that big pile. Next was my attire. I knew, of course, that I wanted to put my best foot forward and I wanted to look professional, but I also wanted to be comfortable. I didn't want to feel insecure about what I was wearing. Is it too tight? Is it too hot? I opted for just a black simple pencil dress that I had right in my closet I bought a black blazer from the thrift store, not a fancy thrift store, just good old value world. And then I bought, or I had black heels right in my closet. The bottom line is you don't wanna break the bank, okay? Look in your closet, see what you have, or try to borrow something from a friend or a family member. You wanna be professional, but you also wanna be comfortable. The less you're thinking about what you're wearing, the more you're gonna be in the present moment and feeling confident in your best self. Now that you know what you're gonna look like, what are you gonna say? That's your elevator pitch. Now, honestly, I didn't even think about an elevator pitch until I was going through all of those career services, resources that help you plan for attending the career fair. I looked at all of those resources and you should too. They have a lot of helpful information in there. Now with your elevator pitch, I went for a very simple framework, name, degree, what year you graduate, and then why you're here. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, practice that in the car, practice it in the shower, practice with a friend or a family member. You will feel silly, but you will also feel very confident when you're saying that pitch to employers. Next, you wanna develop just a quick background summary. 
that is, again, a simple framework. What do you do? How long have you been doing it? And what do you want to do? Practice that same, same spiel. Practice it in the shower, in the car, with your friends and family. You may not need it, but most likely employers are going to ask you about your background and you would have practiced that and you will feel confident telling employers about that. Now, I went right back to that registration and I printed that company list. You're going to go through that company list and highlight all of your musty companies, the highlight the roles that you're most interested in, and then go and do some research. It doesn't have to be much. It's not time for an interview. But what you want to do is grab some quick notes, something in the news, something on their website, anything that resonates with you that is going to make you stand out at that table when you go there. Something that you can bring up that's going to show confidence, preparation, confidence that you prepare for this career fair. Now it's almost time. You want to gather all of your items that you're going to take to the career fair. You don't want to bring a purse. You don't want to bring a jacket, a coat. You don't want to bring a bunch of items that you're going to try to lug around while you're trying to pass out resumes and take notes. Leave as much home as you can. I suggest bringing a pad folio. That way you can stick your phone inside, you can stick your keys inside, and then you have something to write on and um, a place to put your resumes. Again, please try not to bring a whole lot of things. You can leave stuff in the car or just leave it at home. Now, it's the day of. You need to make sure you eat. You need brain power. It's going to be exhausting talking to all of these different people. Make sure you eat. Make sure you're drinking water. Don't try to, I don't know, fast for that day. You're going to need that brain power. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Everyone probably is going to be nervous, okay? We're all humans, no matter if you're an employer or an employee. Talking to strangers is a little bit awkward, especially when you want something. Everyone's going to be a little bit nervous. Put that in the back of your head. It's okay. It's fine. A tip is that once you get to that career fair, you are not going to start with your must-see list. You are going to start with the other companies that are there. Go to those tables, practice your pitch, get your nerves out, get into your groove. From there, tip, you may find a company that you didn't even think about that's a really good fit. Also, now you're ready to go talk to those companies. It's a little bit less pressure when you're talking to companies that are not on your musty list. After that, go work the crowd, go talk to those musty um, companies on your list. And what I want you to do is ask for a business card. That is going to give you contact information for your thank you emails later on. Yes, you will send thank you emails to everyone that you talk to at the career fair. That's another thing that's going to help you stand out. When you are going to each table, before you go to the next one, stop. Take a few notes. Was there something that was a memorable moment in the conversation that you can talk about in that thank you email when you send it later? That's another thing that's gonna help you stand out. Maybe it was a few next steps. Just take down, jot down a few notes before you move to each table. Um, from there, that's pretty much it. You made it through the career fair. Now, what you wanna do after that is Make sure you have your voicemail set up. Make sure it's professional. Make sure you're checking your voicemail and your emails. You are going to a career fair where you want people to contact you. This is the time to answer the phone, not trying to avoid spam calls. It might be a company that is trying to contact you. Confidence, competence, and care. You should be confident now. You went and you did all that preparation. You prepared your pitch. You prepared your background summary. You should feel confident in whatever you're wearing. Competent. You have your resume ready to go, looking great. You worked with career services and had some other eyes on that resume. You researched the companies. You're showing them that you're competent 
and you're bringing a little bit more information, something special to those interactions. Care, you are showing that you care about your career, that you care enough to prepare and be ready for that career fair. Confidence, competence, and care. What questions do you guys have for me? <laughs> Cheryl, how many people do we have out there? Uh, looks like we have one, two, three. So three people. Um, okay. What was I, I was thinking about something when you were giving it. Um, what, was it what was that question I was thinking of? <laughs> Did, so questions that you can, um, for the employer, what would you say? Um, do you have any ideas on questions you could ask them at the career fair? Um, questions for employers? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So depending, I think, on what kind of role you're looking for, um, one of the things I think we talked about, actually, is if you are researching a company and there are not um, roles that are listed in that list of something that you're interested in, but you go on the website and you see something that you might be interested in, maybe asking them about who the right person might be to talk to on um, a position that they're not looking for maybe at the career fair. Um, that's something. Um, talking to them about how your background might be a fit for that other position. I think just getting in front of um, employers or getting in front of people, period. If you make an impression on them, they're going to want you in that company, no matter if it's a role that they're looking for at that time or a role um, in the future. Okay. Um, I'm, let me see if I can think of anything else. Um, I think more so everything was, um, oh, one very good question, it, I think, is why you love working for the company. I mean, you have someone that's at that company um, working there now, you can get their insights and you know, get some, you know, interesting tidbits on what they like. Yeah. And Ariel, could you tell us a little bit about what the interaction at the table with the employer looked like? I think a lot of the time sure. people are nervous about what kind of conversation am I having? What are they asking? What am I saying? Mm -hmm. Just that whole interaction from start to finish. What are some of the conversations you had with those employers? Sure. So I think one of the things that maybe made me stand out was that pitch. Um, so I went up to the table and I started right with my pitch. And you could see their face light up. Um, I think they were excited that someone was prepared with, you know, something that they were going to say. And then from there, I asked them, can I give you my resume? I didn't just give it to them. Um, and then, of course, they're saying, absolutely, please give me your resume. I, I, I want to see, um, you know, what you're all about. Um, from there, maybe you can ask, can I tell you a little bit more about my background? Can I tell you a little bit more about a position that I'm interested in that I saw that you guys are looking to hire for? Can you tell me a little bit more about the position, maybe some things that you're looking for in this candidate? Um, I think the, the conversations were very fluid. They were not the same at every table. I think I kind of just went with the flow of how I was feeling, what they asked after um, I did my pitch. I did my pitch to literally for every single table, even if the table was right next to the other one. <laughs> and a lot of times they said, oh, I heard your pitch over there. It sounded really good. I was hoping that you came to my table. So um, I think they know that, again, you're nervous. They know um, some of the things that you should do to prepare. And, and they see that. They want to see that because those are traits that are going to be great in hiring, hiring someone like you who is prepared and um, who's going to take that extra time to do that before they get there. Great. Again, thank you. Yeah. One thing I want to point out, too, is that I did have people tell me that they were nervous, too. You know, um, maybe it's their first time being an employer at a career fair. Um, so. I think even if you are nervous, just saying that, it kind of breaks the tension and then you can go from there. I think people want to make you feel comfortable too. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Absolutely. 
And so how did you follow up with these employers? Um, what did that follow up look like? What did the engagement look like when you followed up with them? So for me, I started getting calls instantly. So I didn't really even have time to send out um, emails. But what I would say is um, anybody that's attending the um, fall career fair, you still have a lot of time. So get your email template created now. What I would do is just get a simple format of a thank you email um, set up. And then once you are actually at the career fair, you're taking down just those extra notes. So I don't know, say that it's, I don't know, a game, football, something. And someone said something about a football game. You guys, you know, relate it on, um, on that note. Um, that's something that you can put into your thank you email. You know, I attended the career fair. Thank you so much for meeting with me. Um, I loved how we, uh, you know, talked about the Lions game and we were both very excited um, for that. Here are some, you know, specifications about my background, what role um, I'm looking for. I can't, I'm looking forward to talking to you again. Um, you already have a, a template and then you're adding that information in for the specific companies after that. I think that's something that is easy to do before the career fair and then afterwards just plugging that information in and sending that out. Um, I think asking for business cards, that's a big one because if you don't have the contact information, you can't send anything out. Absolutely. That's a huge part of making sure those thank you letters can go out is getting the contact to do so. Yes, yes. And um, you don't have to send a separate email for um, each person. If you talk to a company and you talk to four people, you got all four of their um, business cards, just send one email to all of those people, um, as long as they're with the same company, of course. Yeah, and you might even want to attach your resume, electronic resume in the email. Yes, that's a great idea. Yes. One thing I just want so to mention, I, mm -hmm. oh, go, yeah. it's, it's real, um, it's, sometimes- I'm sorry, but I didn't understand that very well. Did you just say, for example, if you meet four people from the same companies, then each of each of the person a different email or just send an email that's good enough? Because I didn't yes, get can, that very well. Yes, you. I recommend sending one email. Um, you can send one email to all of them. Um, you can name each of them and say, you know, Thank you for meeting with me at the career fair, you know, X, Y, Z. I think it's completely fine to send one group email if they are from the same company. Thank you. You're welcome. How about did you just, did you got these, uh, these offers us on the first uh, event that you went or did you just attend multiple events? No, that was actually the first career fair that I attended. So mm -hmm. I did a lot of preparation beforehand. Um, and I think that's really what helped me um, doing all that preparation. I, I got that practice. I got a little bit more confident. I was still nervous. Um, it was very nerve wracking. But just going to each table, it made it easier and easier and easier. And um, I think just kind of being yourself and trying to, uh, you know, talk about your background, especially what relates to whatever roles that you're interested in. Um, I think that helps. And also, if you do your research and you have just a little something about the company that you can bring up, that goes a long way. That shows that you're not just showing up to the career fair, you're showing up, but you did your preparation and um, you're interested in that company, you're taking that care to show a little bit something extra. Yeah, and how do how do I show interest? How do I how do I show that? Um, how is so interest can... shown to a firm, you know, because usually if I go to talk to a firm, you know, I go because I am interested in the firm. Mm -hmm. So shouldn't just just tell. No, you... that so so the reason why you're here today is to stand out. So okay. everybody <laughs> at everybody there has interest in the firm. You want to stand out. 
So by the, the way you're going to stand out is by bringing some information about that firm okay. to that interaction. <clears throat> so it can be anything. It can, if you go on the website and see something that you resonate with, if you look, um, if you Google them and look in the news and see that, you know, I don't know, they just got an award or something like that. Um, that's going to make you stand out. It's going to be something that's just a little bit different than everyone else that's just coming to talk about their their background. Yeah, I've seen some of the firms that attend the event on the news, you know. Usually mm -hmm. the news, about it's about them having a hard time filling accounting positions. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, you could also make uh, uh bring in some humor with that. <laughs> I don't know. I just I'm just gonna try it. Hopefully, it will work. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So, Robert, are you going to meet the firms? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I'm. I went. Uh, this is my second time. I'm going okay. there, and um, so I'll try to take into consideration your your advising this time. And, I'll try to do something different. Okay. Hopefully it will work out this time <laughs> for me. Robert, can you, can you tell me a few things? Did you make an appointment with Career Services? Yes. To review your resume? Great. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you feel that you did to prepare for that meeting? Well, I felt maybe I did I need a little bit more work I have been working you know and I'll see you know how it work how it goes this time around <laughs> you say you've been working Thank in you. the LLC I've been uh preparing for the meets meet of the firms did you say oh uh, okay because I didn't understand your question very well Oh, okay. Yes. I was, I was trying to see how you prepare for meet the firms when you went there um, previously. Well, pretty much I went through these steps that you mentioned. I did some research about the firms. I talked a little bit about myself and I, so pretty much through these steps as much as I could, but Maybe I missed something and I'll try a little bit harder this time around. Okay. <laughs> I made sure to take notes. Okay. Well, one thing I, or a few things I'll say is make sure you pra practice your pitch and then also make sure you practice your background summary. So I know sometimes, okay. you know, nerves get in the way. Um, you think that, you know, you know your background, you know, what you are, are going to say, but when nerves get in the way, um, it doesn't come so easily. So if you practice a lot, it's going to be in your subconscious mind. It's going to be easier to recite that information. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. It might have happened mm -hmm. with the fact that maybe I didn't practice enough, but I'll okay, try, you know, you know, but thank you so much. Those are very helpful and I really appreciate I'll try to take those into consideration and see how it goes. No problem. <laughs> this time. <laughs> Robert, we can connect on LinkedIn. I would love to hear how it goes. Yeah, Caitlin helped me with my LinkedIn account. I just opened awesome. it a couple, couple days ago or two or three days ago, I think. I'll see. I think that's going to help also. Um, a lot of companies nowadays, they go right to your LinkedIn. Um, if you don't have one, that's a little bit harder because they can't see, you know, um, making sure that your LinkedIn lines up with your resume, um, you know, seeing what kind of content you put out. Um, I think your personal and professional branding is very important when it comes to um, an employer taking a look at you. So you want to make sure whatever you have out there on the internet, um, aligns with what you're saying about yourself on your resume. Yep. I have been working on that as well. So, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <laughs> I think you're going to be in a, a, a much better place. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I think so. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, one thing I, I will just add to that. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I, the one thing I will add to that is, so for the upcoming career fairs, the Meet the Firms and the um, Fall Career Fair, we do have a 
photo booth where you can get your your LinkedIn headshot done. So if you're saying, you know, I don't like what the, what my headshot currently looks like, or gosh, that headshot is, you know, several years old, it would be nice to get a new one. There's no cost. So it's always nice to go get a couple different photos, a couple different options available. So, you know, the first one you take, you might say, eh, I don't like it. Let me let me do a couple new ones um, and see how I feel about those. The great part is what you can do is you can update your photo on LinkedIn before you go talk to employers. So mm -hmm. that's always great because if you walk away from the table and they start doing some research on you, <laughs> um, they're going to find a professional photo to match the LinkedIn that you've already kind of set up that uh, mirrors your resume. So you're showing a consistent front um, with a very professional, um, you know, social media presence. Mm -hmm. Yes, another thing I'll point out too um, is if you are going to any networking event, especially if it's virtual, make sure you have your camera on. That's so important. It shows that you care. Um, it shows that you are, again, wanting to stand out. Um, seeing that eye to eye contact, it helps both the presenter and you make a, uh, make a statement basically. Um, you can also get that practice in of getting comfortable in front of the camera and getting comfortable in those interactions. That's going to help you carry, carry that over into your interactions, um, in person. So I know, um, Caitlin, there's some other um, networking events that are coming up that are virtual, right? Yes, absolutely. We have a handful of lunch and learns that are coming up throughout the next two months here um, mm -hmm. for students and alumni to take advantage of. Okay. And even with those, maybe it's not um, a role that you're very interested in. You can still get practice in you know, those spaces get that networking practice, get that pitch and background summary practice. And then also you never know, it could open the door to something else. All of it is networking, no matter if there is a position open now or later that you align with. Absolutely. And it's so important to, you know, when you're, when you're going to these lunch and learns or you're reading about what they're going to be presenting on, one of the things to always keep in mind too is, um, you know, employers are talking about their company, they're talking about their culture. So if they don't have a position necessarily now, that doesn't mean they won't down the road. So this is still a prime opportunity for you to meet with those employers, still hear about that organization and the things that they do internally that when you're applying online, you may not have that context otherwise, unless you attend it. Um, and it's always great because if that recruiter or that HR individual who presented just so happens to also be on the other end reviewing that resume, and they see your name and they saw you at the lunch and learn, or they see your face somewhere and they remember you from that lunch and learn, it's great to, to build your professional network that way. Um, and it hopefully will help improve your odds. Yes, standing out. <laughs> Absolutely. For our iPhone user, um, I can't see your name, but have you already made the decision to um, attend either the uh, career fair or the meet the firms? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, not this time. I'm not in the US, I'm in India, but just wanted to oh. have my, yeah, I, I have done my master's from Watch Heart. Awesome, okay. Thank you. So what I just wanted to know is it's possible for them to do a virtual meeting for LinkedIn, just the photo session, or we have to be on campus? So the LinkedIn photo booth, um, to, to get that photo taken is an actual physical digital photo booth that will be on campus um, for the event. So we don't have an option to do a of a Zoom photo. Um, but the one thing I will say with that is there are a lot of different opportunities, um, a lot of different apps, a lot of different websites um, where they actually can give you professional backdrops. Um, and it'll kind of, you know, it'll crop out everything around you. Um, or, you know, you can kind of, you know, hold the camera up, it'll show you what the photo looks like, and you can kind of play around with that. Um, to get the photo that you like. I know, actually, prior to having a professional headshot done, that's exactly what I did. 
and you mm -hmm. would not notice the difference. So you can get creative, you can kind of play around with all the different tools that the wonderful internet has available to you. Um, but unfortunately, although that's a very interesting question that hopefully I can look into and maybe see if we have an option later on down the road. Um, but unfortunately, right now it is an in-person um, offer. All right, the reason I'm asking is this one time I saw online, if we do online by ourselves, and maybe the photo session is not that great, or maybe if it is moderate or something, so they would deduct some points, especially employers who check all the details. So that's why I wanted to know if uh, career services are available online. So what I would say to that um, is with employers kind of looking into your online social presence, whether that photo is professional, um, you know, if you say, I can't get a background that that really looks like it came from a photographer, um, that's certainly okay. Not everybody has um, the, the tech savvy kind of level where they're cropping things out and putting new backgrounds on. I know it definitely took me a while to actually do this. I did it, but it took a while. Um, but what you can do, find a, find a blank wall behind you or find at least a nice setting behind you. Um, and you can still get that same effect. So for instance, I know you're kind of looking behind me at just a blank wall. Even if I were to take a photo now and simply crop out, you know, this side over here and all the busyness, um, you could still put something out like that, that an employer would say that's a professional photo. Um, so I always recommend, you know, wear a nice blouse, put a nice uh, blazer on to go with it. Um, take a couple different photos, make sure you have good light. Um, look as if you're going to an interview when you take those photos, though, um, in order to, you know, still make sure that when you're kind of in a sea of images online and employers are looking you up, you still stand out and they say, wow, that's a really nice photo. They don't have to know where you took it, who took it for <laughs> you, or if you did it yourself. Yes, and actually in the um, career services resources um, for preparing for the career fair, I think there is um, something on LinkedIn. And there is a website, I think it's the Passport website, where you can um, make whatever picture's background completely white. And that's what I did for my LinkedIn photo. Um, and that was very helpful. You can't even tell that there was anything else in the background. Amazing what technology can do. Yes. <laughs> So I do want to say um, for anyone that is on the fence about um, attending a career fair or a networking event, I know that um, when I actually just went on ahead and went, it boosted my confidence after that so much. Um, also, it boosted my competence. So before I decided to go to the career fair, I had asked for a raise at my current job a few different times. Um, I ended up getting a raise, but not the amount that I wanted. And what happened was I started to get a little bit, um, I think, insecure about the amount I was looking for. And I wasn't sure if I was worth that amount, honestly. When I went to the career fair I um, and got all of those interviews, I saw that the amount I was looking for was actually the market rate. And so again, I gained my competence in what the market was for the roles that I was looking for at that time. And I don't think that I would have gained that information um, if I didn't go to the career fair. I would have maybe still, you know, been in my head about it or just, just not knowing that information. Um, so again, going to the career fair, um, getting that practice, networking, it really boosted my confidence, my competence, um, and it was a great experience for me. I think, again, like my husband said, it doesn't hurt to go. <laughs> Just see what happens. Good point. Any, Any other, other questions? I don't know, Robert, do you want to practice your um, elevator pitch? <laughs> but I thought that as soon as you finish your college, you know, it was not going to be that difficult to get a job. You can't often, but I can see that much more Say that. complicated. I sometimes I feel like it's much more harder to go through the interview or to get the job than 
for to start the career than finish the college. But that's what I thought, you know. I thought that finishing the college would be good enough, you know, to to get in the door. But I see that require this requires a lot of work. Sometimes mm -hmm. it feels like you need a separate degree on how to mm -hmm. how to prepare for an interview. That's how I feel, you know. So, but. I, I think you're right, Robert. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's hard. And there are a lot of resources out there, I think, because the topic is so popular. I mean, it takes a lot to get through an interview. It takes a lot to feel confident in an interview. And I think that's why these networking events help so much, because you are getting that practice. You are getting that practice talking about yourself, selling yourself, and that's all going to transfer when you are doing those interviews with those companies. Yeah. So it's like uh, building a career is like, like a second. Second job. Seems to be very, yes. <laughs> very difficult. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It can certainly oh, take some so work. Much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> I mean, not some work, but a lot of work. <laughs> no lot <other> work. <laughs> I I believe in you, Robert. That's how I feel. <laughs> you have a good support system here in Career Services, Robert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been helping me so much. So thank you so much. I think I I have improved a lot a lot since I started. Good. And that's exactly what it's all about. It's utilizing the resources that are around you. And with every interaction, with every communication with career services, with every hiring event and every employer you talk to, it's always about getting better, getting more comfortable in yourself, what you can present, your personal and professional brand that you put out there. And so no interaction goes to waste. Every opportunity to communicate with somebody is a learning opportunity um, to build your network. Um, and really those people, as you start to attend more events, um, as you get out there in the community, it'll help improve your communication skills, especially in networking events. It really helps you to think on the fly um, and, and start improving upon, okay, how, what do I say? Focus on my, my ability to listen so that way I can have a meaningful conversation instead of just kind of talking at somebody. You learn a lot of different skills that maybe you thought you were good at. And you're like, oh, gosh, after attending a couple events and having some of that interaction, I might not be as good as I thought. Or mm -hmm. I might need to spruce up in these areas. And that's where attending these events and taking advantage of all those opportunities that are out there will really help you improve on in those areas. I think one thing that I um, didn't mention is when you are thinking about your attire for the career fair, um, make sure you try it on. Make sure you try it on and you walk around the house and you feel comfortable, okay? You don't wanna go again and be insecure about how it's feeling, if it's too hot, too tight, any of that. So I think I forgot to say that, make sure you try it on and walk around the house. An area I'll even add to that, do the handshake motion. If yes. your shoulder is restricted, <laughs> that is one thing you'll find that you're like, hey, this feels pretty good. But the moment you go to like do that handshake, you're like, oh gosh, mm -hmm. I can only move my arms so far in this jacket. So that is always something, you know, make sure, you know, that everything fits, but that you can move in the natural movements you would expect to do at a career fair um, to make sure you don't have any of those awkward encounters at the table. Yes. So in regards to that, I also have a question about because I've noticed when I've attended meetup firms, usually after I talk to a couple of firms or something, you know, my hands get very sweaty. I don't know how to do it. Do you have any suggestion how to deal with that? That sort of situation? I, yeah, I think just yeah. having maybe a napkin or something in your portfolio or in your pocket and before you walk over to that next um, table, just go ahead and, you know, <laughs> um, dry your hands really quickly before you move on. Um, your sweaty palms are going to happen because you're going to be nervous. Um, but just taking a pause in between um, one table to the next, I think that'll help. So you're saying, for example, I am, I just finished talking to a firm, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as I finish talking to that firm, my, my, my hand gets sweaty. So you're saying, you know, to move out and 
clean my hands and then go back and then talk to the other firm not to move from one or to do that there or yep i would just go over to the side somewhere um okay. and yep clean your hands and then take a breath smile and move right on to the next table okay a great way to help with that too, Robert, would be when you're talking with employers, keep your hands open. You know, don't do not do closed fists, kind of keep them open at your side as best as you can. Um, so that way, when you're talking with an employer, you have your interaction, you shake their hand, you walk away. And instead of jumping into the next employer, walk around the room a little bit, collect yourself, get to the point where you say, okay, my hands are good again. I'm going to go in. Um, I'm going to keep my hands open as I talk. So that way the next handshake I'm relaxed again. My hands are dry. Um, you know, it, things happen. Everyone knows that you're nervous. But if you look at ways that you say, hey, this really works for me. If I take a couple minutes, two, three minutes to collect myself after each employer and kind of reset, that's a great opportunity as well to say, okay, I'm ready to go back in for the next one. And, you know, I'm going to keep my hands just kind of at my sides. Even if I, if I need to pat my hands on my pants, they're already kind of there. Um, in order to get yourself ready to to have a professional, you know, conversation and interaction with that employer. Usually, what uh, usually it happens when when I keep in the portfolio, but and when I write down as soon as I do that, if I don't have the portfolio and pen, I don't get that ready. But as soon as I touch the portfolio and the pen, then and I. I don't know. Let's try that. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah, a handkerchief would be a good <laughs> time, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's, I didn't think about that. Robert, do you know what roles you're looking for? Well, I finished just, uh, I got my bachelor's in accountancy like five or six months ago. And then mm -hmm. I know to get into, I actually have a job, you know, but this, this is a job, you know, uh, like clerk job I would like to get into uh, an actual accounting job, like for, so I can build my own profession. Yep, but do you know exactly what kind of role you're looking for? Are you looking to be an accountant? Yeah, I'm looking to work in taxes or audit or in accounting firm. So. Okay, so that's one thing too that I would say is to be very um, clear about what you're looking for. Um, I think that helps companies too. If you bring that up when you're talking to a firm, uh, I'm interested in, in accounting, an accountant, um, a tax audit or XYZ position. And this is why I feel like I'm a good fit. Um, I think that instead of just going up to the firm and, and, you know, saying kind of whatever you have open, being specific, that's also going to show a little bit of competence and care. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions you can think of? Anything else? Were your interviews, um, Ariel, that you had, were they primarily in person or through Zoom your, after you attended the career fair? I think actually they were all over the phone and then um, my second interviews were in person. I think. Um, I think I actually had just one on Zoom. Most of them were in person. Mm -hmm. Yes, that that was a lot. <laughs> it so, was a great experience, but it was exhausting. <laughs> you want to make sure you're you're you listen to your message, and it's a you know professional message or just new. Yes, and also make sure you're, there's so many times I'll call students and their um, messages are full. So make sure yes, <laughs> that's a very good one. It's from employers because who knows if they're going to call you a second time if you think mm -hmm. your mailbox is full. Exactly, that's a great one. So I know I have also another question. There were some situations when I was there was a situation in which 
I was talking with the firm and I felt that the firm is going to do the work. I thought I was I was very confident that I was going to, I thought it was going very well. And then I emailed them and I, I never heard back. Why do you think might be the reason for that? There were at least two or three firms that I really thought that I did really good and I was confident that I was going to I was going to get an offer, but then I never heard back for from those firms. What would you what what would you say is the reason would or you don't have you don't have any sight about that? I don't have a reason, but honestly, um, you know, we can only do as much as we can do. It's unfortunate that you didn't get um, a response back, but I love that you reached out to the company and, you know, you showed them that you that interest. Um, you know, unfortunately, not every company is going to respond back and uh, it's hard, um, but we have to just try to move on to the next one um, or go back and try to make in, um, an impression again with that firm. Maybe it was just that person. Hopefully there's a different person at the Meet the Firms when you go again. Um, but Cheryl, Caitlin, do you have anything for that? Well, I do think follow-up is important. Um, I would follow up once if you don't hear hear back from them. Um, you know, you don't you don't want to over overdo it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but you you know you're it's you're not in control. You know if you're if they don't select you or do want to do an interview. But I do think follow up is is very important. And um, you know whether it's probably through an email would be best. I don't know if you have any other. Thoughts, Katie? I mean, what I would simply say with that is, is follow-up is certainly important. You always want to make sure that you do follow-up um, because you don't know on an employer-to-employer -employer basis which follow-up is going to lead to further interaction and potentially a job offer um, versus which follow-up will not. So I would say across the board, first and foremost, of course, always follow up with every employer that you do interviews with. Um, but what I would do is, you know, if you notice you you send your follow up and you're not getting a response, I would most likely say, you know, be mindful of the fact that one, they could be busy. Two, mm -hmm. there could be a hold on, you know, they say, okay, we've interviewed these people, but something happens on their side that they're not yet, they're not necessarily ready to actually put offers out or things change in terms of budget. And they say, okay, we did this, but we, we might not be able to, um, to, to extend any offers. And that might be for months. Um, it, would it be preferred and is it always better if an employer can at least relay that information to you? Absolutely. Um, but just unfortunately, sometimes with recruiter and HR schedules, they're busy, they forget, they got a million things going on. Um, and it kind of just, unfortunately, they get sidetracked. Um, one of the things that you can always do um, is just if, you, if you've followed up and you're not getting a response, um, you know, keep an eye out for even those rejection emails, because what that's going to do is that's going to tell you, okay, this position has been closed, so I should no longer be contacting that individual. Um, you do also want to be mindful that you don't over contact somebody, um, just because they might look at that and say, okay, you know, I've gotten two, three emails from this person, I haven't responded, um, you know, but that that might be something that an employer says, I don't like that form of communication, or I don't like to continuously contact it like that. And they might be, you know, on the side saying, okay, Robert, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna just kind of block or sidestep. So you want to make sure you keep a relationship with them that you can go back later. Yeah. Um, and, and still have a really good relationship, a really good conversation, um, or just reach out at any point um, when you've applied for a position to say, hey, I just wanted to let you know I, I applied for this position. Um, if you have um, any feedback or any information on potentially when it will be closing or when the interview process is going to take place, I would love to hear more. Hope you're doing well. You know, yeah. that allows you to, to stay in the good graces of those employers and those people that you have communication and contacts for within each organization. So you do that after the follow-up, for example, the fight I met the, the, 
I went to the event, you know, and after the event, I got their contact information. I reached back to them. They don't, I don't hear from them. And then you say to send them that after that. So if I don't hear. If you don't hear anything, what I would say is give it some time. Yeah. So is okay. they exactly. may not thing right away, but maybe they put some offers out. Some, they, some, some folks didn't accept it. So they may have an opening a month later. So maybe a month or a few weeks later, you, you do it one another time. So just because they're, they, uh, they haven't responded, it doesn't mean that I, I will not, maybe I will be considered, right? That's true. Okay. All right. And one thing to consider as well is if you're ever concerned about, are my emails even going through? Am I emailing the right people? If, if you say, you know, I really want to switch my approach up, um, I'm going to do phone calls. You can always do a phone call instead. You're guaranteed, hopefully, as long as you're dialing the right number, you are guaranteed at least that they're receiving that message. Now, what they choose to do with it is on their end, but at least to give up, you know, send them a voicemail and just say, hey, you know, I interviewed for this position. Um, I just wanted to follow up on that and, and see if there's any other information that I can provide for you. Um, you know, please feel free to give me a call. Here's my phone number. That's always a great way for them to say, okay, I know I need to respond to this person because they're following up. Whereas sometimes, one, you either type an email incorrectly or two, and I know it's happened to me myself, emails will go to junk or spam. So if you're ever concerned about that, then take the phone call route um, just to make sure that that person is receiving communication from you so they know you're doing that follow-up. That's actually another very good point is when you are um, looking for contacts from employers to check your spam because I've had wash emails go to um, my spam before. Um, I check that consistently because you never know, especially when you are looking for that contact, if anything is going there. And I have had that as well. So I will second that comment <laughs> to always keep an eye on your junk and spam folders. Yes. Wait. Any other questions you can think of, Robert or um, anybody else? Oh, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry for interruption earlier. Sorry about that. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for attending. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Be sure to check the website on who's attending as well. I mean, everything's there under the career fair and meet the firms. You can see all the employers. Um, and we also do hand, give you a handout when you arrive on the employers and where they're located in the room. So um, we'll look forward to seeing you there. If you have any further questions, feel free to, to um, you know, follow up with Katie or I. And I know we're going to be sending a little handout that Ariel said she was going to put together as well as a recording. Yes. So, thank you. You said there's information about where they sit in. Uh, I don't think that's the, is that available on the website or? Um, it will no. be available the day of. The oh, okay. All right. Because it's not on the website. No, not, the location isn't just who's, who'll be attending. All right, thank you so much. I really hope I didn't bother you guys because I talked a lot today. No. <laughs> Robert. Thank you so much. We love thank you. you. That's what we're here for. Good know. luck, Robert. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Eric. Thank you. thank you. Thanks for presenting, and um, we really appreciate it. And lots of valuable information. So thank you. We'll go ahead and end this. And again, we'll be sending out the recording to those that um, have attended and we will, and we hope to see you at the events. Thank you. Thank you.